Hi, Sunday afternoon, having some fun with some motors. My 56 jab with no there is running fine. This is my Johnson 6, 1974. I just picked up this old Junker Evinrude. 15 or 18 horsepower. 54, 56, somewhere around there. I'm not sure yet. Picked it up as a Junker and it runs. All I do is file the points, put in some new plugs, pour some gas in the carb, and it starts up and idles. Someone drilled out this stupid welch plug. I have to put a plug back in there. Got the electric start for the 18 rare 18 horsepower bracket. Makes it a lot easier to start. Anyway, got my pressure tank here. Well, hooked up with a whole bunch of crazy plumbing. Previous owner is a real hack. Look at these uh, super heavy duty starter cables. Ooh, 12 gauge junk. This is what I call a battery cable. Yeah, what's the double O gauge? <laughs> Well, let's see how it goes. that guys and girls pretty crazy guess when they tossed it was running got a propeller fix this water leak here where you go what a laugh hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching so back up from the beach and so I'll take a quick look at these two motors both of them I just got a couple days ago from a from a junkyard for less than $50 for both I think it was a pretty good deal more on this one in a moment. I'll just show you the Evinrude, what it looks like with the hood on. So I found out and since I found out that this is a 1957 Evinrude 18 horsepower with factory electric starting. I don't know if you can see that. It says electric starting here. Model 15922. As you see, it sure is beat up, but it runs well. Cavitation blade is cracked. Needs a new propeller. That's something I find odd. I got the propeller here from my 59 Johnson 18, and it fits, except that it rubs on the uh, lower unit housing lip here a bit. It's almost like I could take a file and file it down a little bit. I can push it on, and it'll just it's like a 30 seconds of an inch or less. Just take a minute, take a file and clean it up, and it might fit then. The cavitation plate's cracked, and unfortunately the shifter got mangled because it got thrown down on the side. It's all bent, but it still works. If I take the shaft out of the lower unit, I think I can straighten it, and it'll be okay again. Super heavy-duty battery cables, cheap plumbing hose, cheap uh, plastic nylon hose. I borrowed the dual line connector from my 59, so I could connect the pressure tank temporarily. And there's the uh, Super heavy duty choke knob, yeah. A wire nut and a wood screw, oh boy. Let me put the camera down for a minute and I'll take the hood off. Hi, really odd up and off style. One side seems to be made to be mounted permanently to the motor and it stays on all the time. Anyway, you saw this yesterday. Runs well. 
Could benefit from a tune-up, of course, and I have to plug the water pump hole here. It shoots out like a rooster tail, so the water pump is working fine. Yeah, just uh, get a propeller, place lower unit seals. I see some gear well coming out of the water pump. Probably a shaft seal shot, no big deal. Propeller, shaft seals, straighten the shifter, fix up the choke linkage, it's all messed up. What else we got? Just some wiring and fuel lines, away you go. What a laugh. I noticed someone stole the electric choke solenoid, but the mounting is still there in the carburetor bowl. Starter is perfect. Two good coils and everything. Now I'll take a look over here at the 40 Johnson. 1961 Johnson 40 horsepower model. Model uh, RDS 23. Nice cosmetic condition. I've got the 30 Javelin down at the dock, but if I had to make a choice, this is the exact model I would I would want for my own boat. 40 horsepower, more power, and I really like the looks of it. Even the 60 I don't like as much. 61 is nice. Lower unit seems okay. It spins freely. It's in gear right now. Someone tried to take off the lower unit, and so I didn't get the little two covers here and all the bolts in here missing. But they didn't get the big bolt in here. It didn't take the cover off, so they didn't take off the lower unit. I haven't taken it off yet. Original wiring harness. I got to actually get this cover off without much mishap. Let me take the hood off and you can see. I do have a quick question for you. I managed to get all these bolts off without mishap, like I said, but I wonder if these are all original. The two up here are slotted and painted, as you can see they're original. But down here I have three slotted and one hex, and then the slotted up here, two hex, and three hex here. Five of them are slotted hex, one is not, not slotted hex. I guess someone's been messing around with it. I assume they all should be these slotted round head types. According to the parts that they're supposed to be all Phillips screws, go figure. I think this is original. This is a white screw, so they all should be like that. I don't even know if these are stainless steel. They're resting on the heads, so I don't assume that's very good. So I should try and get those replaced, I think. Took it out of gear now. The propeller spins fine. Lower unit seems in fine shape. Also, one other funny thing I've found is I've got the factory warning harness here with the two leads to add on a generator later. But my flywheel doesn't have the cogs for the generator built. I've actually got a generator I could put on it, but I guess I have to get a new flywheel. I think that's rather strange. Anyway, okay, I'll take this. I'll just take this off here, and then I'll show you the rest of the motor. All right, I got the hood off, and I took off the back trim. The only thing that gives me pause about fixing this up is, for some reason, the entire power head is all corroded to bits. It's almost like my dad said someone poured lye or Javix all over it and let it sit for 10 years. Everything's frozen. Starter's frozen. Ch hook sh choke shaft is frozen. Throttle shaft's frozen. Magneto is frozen. Shift rod is the shifter is very stiff. I think it's just up here because it's all green. All the brass parts are green. All the aluminum parts are white dust. Even a bit on the edge of the flywheel here. I really like this motor, I'd like to fix it up. The compression valves are stuck as well. I have to take the head off, I guess, to fix that. I really like this motor, I'd like to fix it up. It's just what I wanted, but I'm wondering if this is a, a good idea of fixing it up, if I should save 150 bucks and buy a similar motor, use this for parts. Anybody have an opinion on that, chime in, let me know. 
the only thing that isn't frozen, oddly enough, is the cylinders. Goes over as smooth as you please. There's a decent compression. I looked inside the cylinders, the pistons are nice and clean. The cylinders look clean as well. So that's a plus. I kind of figure it's worth it. I have to rebuild the starter, magneto, carburetor. I guess I have to take off the head and fix the valves. And give the whole thing a sort of cleaning and wash down. It's very strange. Even down here, look at all this powder. And right here down to the seal, and down here is perfect. It's all the power head area. It's all like gas or vapor or something. Aside from that, it's just what I wanted for a super cheap price. Put some work into it and it should run well, I think. It doesn't look like it's been messed around with very much. All Everything is there. All the parts are original. Even the original wiring harness. Didn't get the junction box. I don't know anything about where it came from. It was just there one day and I grabbed it. Made a deal for 25 bucks for this. a nice looker. Cosmetics last matter a lot I suppose. That's hard to fix the mechanical I guess. Anybody have some ideas about that? Let me know. Two motors 50 bucks. Pretty good eh? <laughs> Hi, here's a quick look at my 1959-18 horsepower Johnson model FD13 in the basement. Got a spare 59 10 horsepower hood here with all the trimmings. I got all the parts for this in the box in the garage. It's not running at the moment. There's the power head left here. No the propellers in the box as well. As I said, the compression on this doesn't seem too good. If you can see, it's hard to see a bit. It's bouncy and hissy. One cylinder doesn't seem so good. I think it's the top one. So if anybody thinks it's a good idea, I could take the Evinrude power head off and put it in this, use the Evinrude internals and the Johnson externals. I really like this style. First year of the 1959, first year of the White Fleet. Still got the pressurized fuel system. I got in the next year they use the fuel pump. I'm actually using the pressure tank down on the 30 horsepower javelin down the dock. Hi. Finally, to close, just thought I'd show you the brochures I got for all the different motors. Here's the 56 javelin 30, and the 57 Evan Road 18, fast twin electric starting. My 59 Johnson 18. The 61 Johnson 40. Super Seahorse 40. And finally my little old Johnson 6, 1974. I got all the brochures for Evinrude from 1909 to 2011 and Johnson from 1927 to 2005. If you need any, send me a PM and I'll email them to you. To make JPEGs out of the Swift files and turn it into PDF. It takes only five minutes or so. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And I'll see you later.